Hey, welcome back, everybody. We're on day 131 now, Life by the Spirit. We're going to be looking at Galatians chapter 2, Romans chapter 12, as well as Galatians 5 and 6. So little sections from each one. So let's start with Galatians 2, 20. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I that live, but Christ living in me. That life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself up for me. So though I live life in this flesh and body, I no longer live to the flesh in a spiritual sense, but rather the flesh has been crucified with Christ. So now it's no longer me or you that lives in the natural man or natural woman or natural body with the natural inclinations and thoughts and uh, desires and, and those things, but rather we die to those things and we place ourselves positionally and covenantally in Christ. And then we start to take on the mind of Christ as we pray uh, to God, as we take every thought captive to Christ, as we put our mind on him and his word, trans transformation starts to take place. Uh, verse 12 of Romans tells us this. Uh, Therefore, I urge you, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service. Don't be conformed to this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what is good, well-pleasing, and the perfect will of God. So it's often been said we need to look for the perfect will of God, not just with that which is permissible. A lot of times people want to ask, you know, what does God permit or how far can I go without being in sin? But what is the perfect will of God for your life, for my life? That's really the question we need to ask. But I, I want to point out one thing here, and that is uh, the imagery that comes to mind here when, when God says, uh, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service. This is Old Testament language. This is covenantal language, priestly language. The priests would offer sacrifice on behalf of God. That would be their spiritual service to offer atonement for the people. But now our spiritual service is to offer our bodies a living sacrifice. We don't put anything to death but the flesh, and we put our lives to God, saying, I'm going to live out the gospel. I'm going to live my life as a sacrifice to God. Galatians chapter 5 now, 5, 13 through 26. For you, brothers, were called for freedom. Only don't use your freedom for gain to the flesh, but through love be servants to one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. In this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, be careful that you don't consume one another. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, that you may not do the things that you desire. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Let me summarize that quickly. Uh, do we have to try to look at every law of God every day and try to make sure we're obeying it? No, because if we're led by the Spirit, we're naturally going to fulfill the law. Now, that doesn't mean the law is no longer a moral standard or we don't have to obey it. It's just that the technicalities of the law, we're not following the letter of the law, but the spirit of the law by life in the spirit. And so, of course, if we align and look at our life and align it with scripture, it's going to match up. Not because we're sitting there thinking about it all day long, but rather as we live life by the spirit, it aligns with the law and the will of God. Um, and prior to that, he says we have freedom in Christ, but don't use our freedom to backbite. Rather, use our freedom to love one another. And really the summary of the law is to uh, love your neighbor as yourself. Because if we do that, if everyone loves their brother or sister or neighbor as themselves, the world would be perfect. So obviously that's not happening, right? So that's the goal. That's the desire that uh, we need to look towards, uh, not to fight in war with one another. And ultimately, verse 16, I think, is perhaps one of the most important verses in all of scripture, but I say to you, walk by the spirit and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. So as I just said, uh, I gave the example of not having to look at every jot and tittle to say, am I doing that? But rather live by the spirit. And on the flip side, he's saying, if you live by the spirit, you're not going to obey the flesh. So it's not that I sit there and say, flesh, I don't want to obey you. It's that I say, spirit, God, I want to obey you. And as we walk by the spirit, we naturally will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Now, the deeds of the flesh are obvious, which are adultery, sexual immorality, uncleanliness, lustfulness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, strife, jealous and outbursts of anger, rivalries, divisions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, orgies, and the things 
like these, of which I forewarn you, even as I have forewarned you, those who practice such things will not inherit God's kingdom. So even though I just said we walk by the Spirit and we don't have to look to every jot and tittle in the Bible to say, am I obeying this? He does give us a litmus test here to say, if these things characterize your life, you're not walking by the Spirit. So we do need to look to the Word of God and measure it. But again, as we once we have measured it, then it's not like we're daily just like, am I committing heresy? Am I a drunkard? Am I uh, uh, doing uh, sexual immorality and adultery and sorcery, which is in this time would be, uh, you know, drugs that would bring you into a, a spiritual state of being to a higher power. So all of these things, once we understand them, uh, we, we say, no, I'm not, I turn from those things and I walk in the spirit. Uh, but many are self-deceived and say, I'm walking by the spirit. I'm walking by the spirit by doing drugs drawn closer to God. I'm walking by the spirit because I allow my body to essentially be one with the universe or whatever these crazy things we hear today, right? And Paul says, no, that's not how we walk in the spirit. And that's where he, on the flip side here, gives us what the spirit looks like. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and lusts, if we live by the Spirit, let's also walk by the Spirit. Let's not become conceited, provoking one another and envying one another. So take some time, look through both those lists there, both the fruits of the flesh or the, uh, the uh, what's he call it there, the, uh, the fruit of the Spirit, but the deeds of the flesh, okay? This translation says, so there's deeds of the flesh or actions of the flesh, but the fruit of the Spirit is singular it's from god which all it all stems from love that stems from the holy spirit okay last section here chapter six of galatians brothers even if a man is caught in some fault you who are spiritual must restore a one in a spirit of gentleness looking to yourself so that you also aren't tempted bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of christ for if a man thinks himself to be something when he is nothing he deceives himself but let each man test his own work and then he will take pride in himself and not in his neighbor. For each man will bear his own burden. But let him who is taught in the word share all good things with him who teaches. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his own flesh uh, will from the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the spirit will from the spirit reap eternal life. Let us not be weary in doing good. For we will reap in due season if we don't give up. So then, as we have opportunity, Let's do what is good toward all men, especially toward those who are of the household of faith. I wish he had more time to unpack this passage because there's a lot in here, but um, he, he kind of has a nice play on words and connects it all together in a very uh, good way. But he kind of just, uh, you know, starts off by saying, let's not be puffed up and let's each man needs to take care of himself. But at the same time, let's, uh, you know, look out for our neighbor. But if everybody's looking out for themselves, then all is good. But when people do fall into error, then we need to point them in the right way. But we don't just say, I'm going to walk in error until somebody calls me to repentance, right? No, we, we, we attempt to bring our lives in line with the law of God and word of God. Um, and then we have people around us as a backup plan in case we're walking in ignorance or, or just immaturity, right? Um, so each man's a bear his own burden. Uh, and then he says, those who are taught the word should share in all good things. So uh, that ultimately we should give to the church, give to, uh, you know, pastors and preachers that are uh, edifying us. But he, he does a nice play on words here because he talks about giving to those who are, are edifying. But he says, don't be deceived. God is not mock mocked. Whatever man reaps, he, that will he will also sow. So in a, in a certain sense, he's talking about sowing, uh, right, to a ministry. And some faith teachers kind of place it all towards that. This is all about planting seeds of faith and God's going to make you rich if you give to the church. That's not what he's talking about here. Um, we should give. Just as a man gives, that's what he's going to reap, right? But then he says, he uses it to say, just as we give to others and we're going to good, give good things or get good things back from the Lord, a blessing, a spiritual blessing. It might not be material wealth. But if we sow to the flesh, meaning if we tithe or give to the flesh, we're going to get fleshly rewards. But if we reap or give to the spirit we're going to get that back so he uses this this picture of giving 
now in a spiritual sense, which is quite clever. Uh, so he says, let us not be weary in doing good. In due season, we're going to reap the reward if we don't give up. So he's talking about here both giving monetarily and giving of ourselves spiritually. We're going to reap blessings from the Lord when we walk in these ways. All right. For time's sake, we better cut it off there. But there's some questions I have at the end. Have a blessed weekend uh, and a blessed Lord's Day tomorrow. We'll see you guys m Monday. And uh, for a lot of you guys, this is the beginning of your summer. Uh, hope to continue on and finish this book out with you. So we'll see you guys soon.